many of you today. Uh, we have quite an active crowd, which is very nice. Um, today, uh, we have Attila Tot, and he will uh, tell us about Skyla DB. Uh, actually, it's pronounced Sila DB. It's, That's right. Yeah, and you see, I, I, I didn't butcher your name. I did butcher the name of the DB. Correct. But no, now no. you're going to pronounce it correctly, and you're going to show us what it is. Great. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so as Jacob said, I, I'm going to talk about uh, SillaDB and I'm going to do a, a quick demo as well in Python and how you can connect to uh, SillaDB in Python. Uh, so I'm going to quickly share my screen. Do, 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 do. Um, Okay, so hopefully you're seeing my screen. Uh, yes, okay, great. Um, so let's get started. Um, by the way, I'm gonna be trying to be monitoring the chat uh, on my second screen. So if people have questions, uh, I might be able to um, answer them uh, while I'm uh, doing the talk. Um, so, um, my name is Attila Toth. Uh, I uh, work as a developer advocate for a, a company called uh, uh, Scylla, uh, which is behind uh, uh, Scylla DB. Um, and uh, I've been working uh, as a software engineer or a developer advocate in the data space for about six, uh, it's more than six years now. Um, and I live in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, so it's a uh, it's uh, quite late for me. So forgive me if I if I sound tired. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak here. Um, so first of all, um, um, just uh, quickly about uh, Scylla DB before we actually do the demo, so people um, get an understanding of Scylla DB, even if you are not familiar with it. Um, so SillaDB is a NoSQL database, um, and it's a, it's a replacement for uh, Cassandra and uh, DynamoDB. Uh, both are NoSQL uh, databases. Uh, and uh, basically the idea behind uh, SillaDB is that it, pro it provides a better performance over uh, uh, legacy NoSQL solutions. Um, so overall, uh, you can get higher throughput, uh, lower latency um, at the same cost. Um, and uh, your, uh, we have a lot of users who save a lot of money uh, by switching from, uh, you know, other NoSQL solutions uh, to Scylla DB. Um, and uh, usually it's not just cost saving, but also reducing complexity. Uh, like, for example, instead of having to uh, manage uh, uh, like for example 20 uh, Cassandra nodes um, uh, with Scylla DB you might be able to just manage you might be able to uh, uh, just have to manage like 10 Scylla DB nodes so you have much fewer number of servers to manage um, and they are also cheaper uh, another big benefit for Scylla DB is that uh, you avoid vendor lock-in. You can run Scylla DB uh, anywhere. Um, uh, it's open source. Uh, at least there is an open source version, uh, and you can uh, uh, host Scylla DB yourself to totally for free on any machine. Um, but we also provide a, a database as a service um, built on top of AWS and GCP. Um, so overall, uh, Scylla DB uh, can be a great choice for you uh, if you have, if you're building an app or uh, if you're building some kind of project where you require your database to be highly available, um, low latency, high throughput, uh, and you have lots of data, you have big uh, data. Uh, generally speaking, these are, uh, these are the use cases where Scylla DB really uh, shines. Uh, all right, let's continue. Uh, so I just wanted to show uh, a few companies that use Scylla DB. 
uh, you might recognize some of these uh, companies uh, like uh, uh, you know Disney Plus or Discord uh, or uh, Comcast. Um, they all use uh, CLDB uh, for their production uh, workloads. Um, and uh, as mentioned before, if you don't want to manage CLDB yourself on your own machine, uh, you can use uh, uh, our cloud offering, CLDB Cloud, which is a, a fully managed uh, CLDB service. Um, and uh, you can use either Go Cloud or AWS as your uh, as your provider. And um, we have a bunch of regions available. Um, and so this is a good option for you if you don't want to uh, get bogged down managing your database and you want and you just want to have a, a database up and running all the time without having to manage it all right so now I'm gonna jump uh, to the demo um, I don't see any questions in the chat so I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna show you how to uh, yeah I'm gonna show you how to um, you how to connect to CLADB, uh in Python um, so before I start, um, I hope everybody can see the uh, see my uh, uh, notebook in the VS Code. I increased the font size, so everybody should be able to see it. Uh, so I'm using a notebook here, um, and I'm gonna run a part of the demo that we have available um, on GitHub, uh, GitHub.com/slash/sila-db/slash/carepet. Um, it's um it's a simple uh, CLADB project that helps you sort of get started with CLADB. We have tutorials in uh, uh, in multiple languages, including Python. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be showing the Python example uh, today. Uh, and this uh, sample project is uh, is an application where you have uh, 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 pets. So, for example, dogs uh, in your uh, database. You have uh, uh, sensors, uh, health monitoring sensors on on these imaginary uh, pets that record uh, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, data points, and then you have owners. Uh, so it's basically this uh, made up sample uh, pet monitoring application that we use to uh, uh, help people get started with uh, CLDB. Um, so. Um, so, so, so let's actually see how this works. So, if you want to connect uh, to uh, to a CLDB instance, uh, you need to install uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, CLDB Python driver, uh, which you can do uh, with a pip install, um, and then I actually need to uh, look up what's the exact name of the package. Give me a second, CLADB driver Python. Um, so it's Scylla driver, Scylla slash driver. So you can just pip install it, uh, and then you can uh, connect to a uh, CLADB database. So once you have this package, uh, you need to import uh, the uh, cluster module and uh, you can notice here that we are actually importing it from uh, a cassandra module uh, because uh, as i mentioned before CLADB is compatible with cassandra uh, and uh, the scylla driver is actually a, a forked from the cassandra driver as well also uh, if you have any other tool or technology that works with cassandra that will also work with CLADB. So that's uh, that's useful. Uh, so we are importing this module called, called cluster. Uh, so let me run this. Um, and then basically uh, the simplest way uh, to connect to uh, CLADB uh, cluster is to specify the uh, the host. So in this case, this is a, an, uh, this is the IP address. Uh, of a CLDB instance that I'm running locally uh, in uh, Docker, uh, but uh, you can also uh, connect to like a cloud instance if you have a, a cloud instance running somewhere. 
but you need to specify the host. And then by using the connect function, you create a, a new session object, which is going to be the uh, the object you use to interact with SiloDB. Uh, so let me run this. Uh, we see that uh, we, we get a session object uh, back. So that means the connection um, uh, uh, is working. And now we're going to query uh, some data from uh, uh, from SiloDB. And, and we do that by first uh, uh, writing the query, which is going to be a, a very simple select query. Um, yeah, we define the, uh, the key space. Uh, uh, the, the key space is uh, similar to what you would call, uh, 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 I think, a schema in, uh, in a relational database. And then you, we define the name of the table. So in this example, the key space will be uh, carpet and uh, the table will be owner. And uh, we uh, only want to see five results at most or uh, five results or, or less in, in our results. Uh, so when we execute this uh, query, uh, we get back uh, a row uh, object. Um, and uh, in this example, we only have just one item in our table uh, um, with, uh, with a, an ID, uh, an address, and then we have uh, uh, the name. Uh, we can also prettify the, the output um so we just print the the id the address and the name uh, so that's how you can query data from uh, from a SiloDB table uh, again it's very similar how you would do it in uh, um in uh, in a in a in a, in a, in a sql database as well uh so now let's see how you can insert data uh into a table in python uh, again, this is very similar to, to regular SQL. Uh, we need uh, the name of the columns, uh, which are owner ID, address, and name in this example. And we need the values that we want to insert. Uh, in this example, we're going to insert uh, uh, Homer Simpson as a new pet owner. And then this is going to be the query that we are using, um, insert into uh, again, the key space and the table name, and then uh, the three uh, placeholders for for the uh, for the values. Um, and then we uh, execute this query, and then we pass the uh, uh, values as uh, query parameters. So if I run this, this will insert the data, and let's see that it actually uh, got inserted. Uh, by running another select query and now filtering by the owner ID. So we want to use the uh, owner ID that, that we previously created, aka the ID of Homer Simpson. So we're gonna use that here and we're gonna execute the query using uh, the owner ID as the uh, parameter. So if we run this, uh, we, got uh, uh, Homer Simpson as the result. So the row indeed uh, has been inserted. Now let's see how you can delete the data. Uh, so again, this is pretty much the same as how you would do it in, in SQL. Uh, delete from and then key space table. And then we are deleting uh, based on the owner ID. Uh, so if you run this, the, the row gets deleted. So if I go back to the previous uh, example and run this same snippet, now we got uh, none back as the result because that row uh, uh, doesn't exist anymore in the table. So this is the very basic usage uh, of the uh, SiloDB driver. Now, if we want to get a little bit more complicated because sometimes uh, you want to connect to SiloDB and interact with SiloDB uh, in, uh, in a custom way. Um, uh, and this is where uh, execution profiles come into the picture. So an execution profile is uh, basically an interface for you to uh, customize how you interact with the database. So uh, in this example, 
we are going to define, uh, uh, we are going to customize two things uh, in, in, in relation to our connection to CLDB right here. We're going to define the consistency level and we're going to define the uh, row factory uh, parameter. So the first one, the consistency level, uh, is actually re really important uh, in, uh, in NoSQL databases because this will define uh, how many nodes will need to uh, respond to your request in order for the operation to be successful. So this means if, uh, for example, you have five, uh, uh, five nodes in your CLDB cluster, so you have five uh, database servers and they are trying to satisfy your query that we ran previously, for example, um, then um, um, this will define how many nodes will need to respond to the query in order for the operation to be successful. And in this example, we are using a, a consistency uh, level of uh, a local quorum, which means that uh, the majority of the nodes will need to respond to the request in order for it to, uh, to be successful. Uh, but you can define, uh, you know, other different uh, consistency levels as well, depending on, uh, on on what you're trying to achieve. And then... Uh, um, uh, let, let me ask a little bit more here. Yep, yeah, sure. What, what happens if only one responds? Why is it not good enough? Um, so if only one responds, uh, that means that other nodes uh, uh, might uh, uh, not be available or they might not have uh, uh, the data that you are trying to query. Um, so basically, if, you, if your consistency level uh, is higher, uh, then uh, it, it's going to take more resources to satisfy that query uh, and you're going to be um, kind of sacrificing uh, availability in favor of consistency and uh, and uh, like you need to make that decision if you want to do that. So in our case, we have five nodes, then three of them must respond to actually give us the answer, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, what happens with the other two? Um, what, what, what do you mean, what happens? Like that? they will respond later and then the query will not be in meta or will they not respond at all or does it matter? Uh, they don't need to. Uh, they don't need to respond, and they they might uh, like for example, if you if you insert data, then uh, um, like if for example, if you insert one row, that one row will not be present in all the nodes right away. It might take some time until that one row gets replicated across all the nodes. Got it. So in this situation, since we have multiple nodes and let's say we've written one record, then perhaps only one of them uh, got actually written and the rest are waiting to propagate this data. And uh, if I query only one, I might get another one who didn't get the record and then I, may, I might get the wrong result, correct? Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, but if, uh, but, but if I answer, but if the majority answers, and all of them answer the same way, then chances are that I got the correct answer, correct? Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, so this is why we have a consistency level. Got it. Yes, but uh, it, it has a, has, has a trade-off. So the higher your consistency level, uh, uh, the more, uh, you know, resources uh, yeah. your cluster. I have multiple pay. nodes that have to do and respond. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, yeah, so consistency level is one of the things that you can set. And uh, if I actually hover over the execution profile, you can see uh, all the other set things that you can uh, set, like, for example, uh, uh, the, 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 the timeout that you uh, allow uh, and the other options you can 
look all these up uh, in the in the uh, CLDB documentation if you are uh, interested. Uh, but the other parameter I wanted to show here, uh, which is uh, relevant to Python, um, at least it was very relevant for me when I first um, worked with uh, data in Python and uh, querying databases in Python, is uh, row factory. Uh, so this will be this will define uh, how you uh, receive data from the database because by default uh, as uh, you have seen in the previous example uh, what you get back is a row object uh, which is not very uh, uh, friendly to work with at least uh, for me um, but this way we can we, we can use a dict dictionary factory so what we will get back from the database is a is going to be a dictionary, a list of uh, dictionaries. So let me actually run this uh, snippet first. Import the uh, modules, uh, and then uh, uh, run this snippet where we create the execution profile, and then we use the execution profile to create the cluster. Uh, and then another thing that we do here is that we are when we are connecting to the cluster to create the session uh, we are also uh, uh, providing the key space as a parameter uh, which is going to be carpet so when we write uh, a query a select query for example we won't need to uh, specify anymore the key space because we, we specified for the whole session so, the, so for the uh, whole lifespan of the session we're going to be using this key space that we define here so I'm going to run this snippet. Uh, we have the session object. Uh, and then now we are going to query uh, the owner table. And uh, uh, and uh, and let's see what we got get back. So what we get back here is a, is a list of dictionary, uh, which is uh, which is going to be much easier for us to 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 work with uh, in uh, in Python. Um, so basically, that's all I, I wanted to show. Um, and um, let me uh, show you some resources. Uh, and uh, also later, I can probably put these links in the chat. Um, if you want to continue your journey learning uh, uh, CLDB and NoSQL uh, in general, uh, we have a really, really good resource center. Uh, oops. Uh, uh, called the uh, CLDB University, um, which uh, provides a lot of free content uh, for you to learn about uh, 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 NoSQL topics like data modeling, for example, what we discussed before I started the demo. Uh, also, obviously, uh, CLDB and how to use CLDB in different languages. Um, so university.cildb.com is definitely a, a good place to, to, to get started. Um, and then uh, we have uh, this, we have the CLDB community uh, forum.cldb.com. If you have like very specific questions, uh, if you get stuck with CLDB, uh, then um, uh, uh, I, I'm in that community to answer questions. Also, we have a lot of really smart engineers from the CLDB team who are there to to uh, help you uh, find solutions. Um, and then I wanted to share two uh, sample applications that uh, that are relevant for you so one is the the one um the first one is the one that i just showed you um with the with the pet application it's available at uh, iot.cilladb.com uh we have uh, um uh, i can actually show you if that's okay um, all right we have uh, so if you go to iot.cilladb.com uh, you have uh, all sorts of uh, tutorials and uh, instructions how to uh, build this application from uh, scratch. Um, uh, we also have uh, a page that sort of describes the uh, the data modeling uh, process. Uh, as I mentioned before, with building NoSQL um, database architectures, you always start off with the application. And then you move backwards toward the towards the database schema. So that's that process is uh, is uh, is described here. Um, and uh, then we have uh, examples in different languages. Uh, here's the the Python one, 
and, and this one. So I used a, a small portion of uh, this example in, in my demo, uh, but the full example will help you build uh, uh, not just the database side of things, but it will also help you create a, a sensor script which generates random IoT data and it inserts it into CLDB. And this tutorial also shows you how to build the API with Python, a REST API, uh, which uh, queries data from CLDB. So it's a pretty cool, pretty interesting uh, project. You can uh, um, complete it uh, with uh, Python and Docker. Uh, Docker is used to host uh, CLDB uh, locally. Uh, you can also use CLDB uh, cloud for this project. Uh, and then the other project that we have, which is actually uh, somewhat new, uh, is a which is which also uses Python, is a feature store sample application. Um, uh, because we have a lot of uh, users who are building uh, all sorts of machine learning applications, and they use CLDB as their feature stores, uh, especially uh, for uh, like online uh, online uh, uh, processing. Uh, uh, sorry, online store. In, in feature stores, there are like online stores and offline stores. Uh, and usually uh, for online stores, uh, performance performance matters a lot. So that's where uh, users uh, leverage uh, CLDB. So we have a tutorial for, for that um, that shows you uh, uh, how to build uh, a feature store uh, in Python. This one uses a, a, a sample flight data set so you can sort of try to predict flight delays uh, that will happen uh, in the future. So this might be interesting for, for some of you. Um, so that's it. Uh, if someone wants to uh, reach out to me after the after today, uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, chat. Uh, you can find uh, me on Twitter, uh, or you can also email me, uh, Attila. Uh, dot tot uh, at cilladb.com uh, and uh, yeah thank you thank you for your attention and uh, let me know if uh, people have questions okay Let, let's first give you a round of applause anyone unmute themselves make some noise make some claps you have all sorts of yay <laughs> good job man. thank you okay good so now uh let's get with the, let's back uh, let's ask questions anyone has questions come on you must have something uh so the query language if i missed it or i see in the in the chat as posted as it's it's c q l like for the query stuff that was in there it, it looked like dead on to like mysql mysql language like it, is it extremely similar the query language uh in comparison to sql even though it's a NoSQL database yeah so the query language uh, that i used in a demo is uh, cql which is uh, which stands for cassandra query language so this is the query language of cassandra uh, and it's very very similar to uh sql uh the difference is that it cannot do as much so there are a lot of things that you can do in SQL, things like uh, uh, joining, for example, two tables. So you cannot do that in um, in a Cassandra query language. Um, uh, but for example, you can also use the DynamoDB API because CLDB is also compatible with that. Awesome, thanks. So if you if you have multiple tables in your uh, namespace and you want to do um, some like data, data manipulation with it, is it like normal practice to query the data out of that database and like parse it into a different library like pandas and perform joins and do whatever data manipulation you want to? Like, is it or yeah, I, I, practice for, for doing something like that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, usually yeah. you use uh, CLDB in places where you uh, like you want uh, fast responses from, from the database. So you need a high performance database. Uh, and then you might need to uh, uh, query the database multiple, multiple times in your code because maybe you are getting some uh, data from one table and getting another type of data from from another table and then you're joining your 
to data sources um, in code in your application. So that's uh, uh, fairly uh, normal. Or another way to do it is to just have one very wide table, uh, a denormalized table, which contains everything. Um, and uh, that will be really fast. And then you just need to query that one uh, table. So it depends on the, uh, uh, the kind of application uh, that, that you're building um and uh, the kind the kind of queries that you're that you're querying uh the kind of queries that your application is running um also just real quickly i wanted to mention that we uh SiloDB is also used for analytics um so sometimes people switch out like multiple databases uh, like i don't know they might have uh, something like i don't know redis uh, an in, -mem in memory database and then they have like i don't know postgres and cassandra and they switch those out to use just one SiloDB uh, instance, uh, and then they run all sorts of workloads on SiloDB, uh, and they accept the fact that, like, like they know what queries will need to be really fast, and so they optimize uh, for those, and then they uh, know what queries can be slower. Like some of the analytical queries can run like uh, you know overnight, or they can take like you know, it's okay if they take like 10 minutes and so they don't optimize uh, for those, but at least they only have to have, have to manage one database, which is uh, SiloDB. But that's just, a, that, that's just an, an example. Is there a way to actually do joins within SiloDB? Uh, no. Okay, so it's really a key value store. It's not a database you can actually run big queries or complex queries on. Um, no, no, it's, 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 a it's a, it's a fast database. So if you want to get your data really fast and then do something with it in your application, then, uh, SiloDB is a good choice, but you probably don't want to, and probably cannot write, uh, like complex analytical queries. So no, there, there is like in Mongo, you can actually do some joins. The language allows you to do that. Here, there isn't a mechanism to do this. But, uh, no. But the trade-off that it's fast. It's fast and uh, highly available. Okay. So uh, is it good for situations where I have like lots of, reg like I run simulations and I have like many processors running many, many, simulations and the simulation writes whatever happens to each patient in each time so we have like a huge amount of data generated all the time will it be sufficient that instead of storing it in memory i just dump it to the database instead of like dumping it to disk is it is it suitable for such situations uh you mean where there is a very high rate of ingestion yeah uh yeah of course so yeah. I can ingest as much as I can produce, so my bottleneck will be probably communications I.O., correct? Like, as long as I.O. Is, is satisfied, then the DB will be able to handle it. Um, yes, and if you use a programming language that is fast enough, like, for example, um, with Python, it's actually interesting because with Python, it can be challenging uh to write like really fast applications because um like people like a lot of our uh, users go with something like rust for example which can be really fast uh in in python you need to create your own ways to uh like um like for example to ingest data uh in in parallel uh, and um so we usually like if someone really cares about like high performance python might not be the best language to do that actually i just wanted to mention that no, the, the, the bottleneck will become communications no io if it's really high throughput like the ability of the of the of the data to be transmitted because this is usually the slowest part like memory is fast computation even in python is fast but the question is, can you transfer it all? So the bottleneck will probably become communication. I assume, I don't know. Maybe they have solutions for those things. Like, uh, you know, maybe very many, many slow computers generating data and outputting this to multiple nodes. Maybe it will work. The, I don't know. 
So uh, when you mean by Python is slow, um, are you meaning without uh, threading? Uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically, the machine can ingest a lot. The, if you have a lot of nodes, you can ingest fast, correct? Um, yeah. I mean, if you have a lot of nodes, um, um, yeah, it depends on the hardware as well. And uh, I mean, there are other factors, but yeah, yes, generally, I would say yes. Okay. Good to know. Um, any other any other questions? Anyone? Yeah, kind of taking a, a more of a step. Can you back speak up? Back, sorry, taking a step back and kind of thinking more macro. What is like a, a use case with one of the companies that kind of use Scylla DB? What is like a use case where they kind of use it for performance? Um, so um, we have uh, like for example, time series was mentioned before. Uh, in this meetup, uh, time series data is actually one of the main use cases to use um, uh, Scylla DB. Um, but basically, it can be any kind of uh, application, any kind of data uh, where you need uh, low latency. So, for example, um, we have uh, uh, Disney Plus uh, 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 Hotstar as a customer. So, they are. Uh, providing uh, streaming solutions to uh, you know a bunch of users obviously they will need to be really fast a user will not wait uh, 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 you know seconds for for a video to load so it needs to be really fast um, and uh, in use cases where you need your database to be available all the time um, so generally speaking those are the the main use cases um, and then if you just have a lot of data and if you need a, a system where where it doesn't matter how much data you have uh, your database will be up and running and it, it will uh, stay uh, fast and fast means um, you know less than 10 milliseconds uh, uh, p99 latency um, we actually have a, a conference called p99 because that's uh, um, that's what a lot of our uh, customers care about as a metric. Yeah. Well, so in that case, so like big things, so like streaming is a big use case. Um, anyone who has like, so I saw, like, I think Starbucks is one of your customers. So like anytime you have like massive amount of customer data or I guess anything, I guess anything that's data over the web is kind of like, sorry, to be honest, I'm more of a data analyst. I, I, the big data stuff kind of goes over my head a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I can uh, put a link in the chat um, where um, you can read more about our like user stories. Um, but for example, Discord uh, would be one very big uh, a company with a very big user uh, user base, um, and then we have. Uh, uh, like companies that use us for analytics as well. Like for example, there is this company uh, called uh, 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 ShareChat. Um, I think it's an Indian um, Indian company, um, and they use uh, SiloDB for uh, for analytics. So it can be uh, good for an analytics as well. Um, and an IoT, uh, which is uh, another big. Uh, uh, huge case, uh, use case um, uh, in in things like uh, you know manufacturing uh, and uh, like the it, it's funny we we actually have a a customer uh, who uh, uh, who monitors pets uh, health so just like the the sample application they actually monitor uh, pets uh, pets uh, data um, so that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, so yeah, I started just checking out that um, the SiloDB.com slash users page where we have a lot of very detailed customer stories uh, and you can read how people actually use SiloDB. Um, I have one more question about the SQL or the, the language it's using. Um, so 
in this language that you like the query language can you do things other than simple selects can you do counts can you do sums or something like this group by or anything similar yeah you can do those uh like you can do group buys you can do counts um but for example uh, let me think um can you do like some of uh, group buys like you know categories or I'm, I'm asking out of curiosity i have no application in mind uh so you can uh agree you can do aggregates in in cql um perfect i think, I think you can do some as well um, I will get this sum as an aggregate. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, you cannot do, uh, like, for example, uh, you cannot do uh, um, uh, common table expressions, for example. Okay. And if the database is huge, does it have like an approximate one? I know some of the faster new databases allow you to either run things on gpus or do things like the approximate answer or stuff like that or is it something that is possible like you don't have the exact answer you just need the approximate enough the minute you ask uh i'm not sure about that um then doesn't matter it's it's speculation because you mentioned the fast database someone might say, if you don't have it now it's probably in the pipeline to doing it and, and will appear at some point because many databases are trying to be faster than they are now and there are all sorts of tricks to get there <laughs> yeah especially with aggregates like summing on uh, all the records will take forever but oh well Attila, oh. thanks so much. Uh, I uh, was just on a webinar recently with Datastax and the uh, databases for products. And uh, how, how does a vendor get their uh, products up on a web page and web frame really quickly? And it looks like uh, uh, ScalaDB is a lot faster and a lot cheaper in comparison with Datastax and Cassandra. So this has been uh, real informative, and it's you look like you have very competitive service here. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean we have a lot of user stories where people switch from Cassandra, and it's not just that we are faster. I mean you can read like benchmarks, not just from us, but third-party benchmarks as well, uh, but. Uh, it's also the reduced complexity. Like I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think we had a really, a really good user story, where uh, it was it was a it, I have to look it up, but it was a big company with a lot of data, and they had like uh, uh, twenty or maybe even thirty plus Cassandra nodes that they managed, and they were able to uh, switch that out with uh, like i don't know maybe like 10 silo db nodes so they needed to manage uh, much, uh like uh, fewer servers it costs it costed it cost uh, less money for them and uh, and uh, they also got better performance um so so yeah and one thing i didn't mention which is actually important is that uh, cassandra is mentioned is uh, written in uh, java um and uh SiloDB was written in uh, c plus plus um so that's also one of the reason one of the reasons why uh why uh SiloDB fundamental is faster or can be faster than than cassandra in, in a lot of uh, cases real good thank you any more questions by anyone questions going once Sorry, one last question. Um, Go ahead. I'm still kind of confused. How does, or I don't know if this is the right question, but what actually is a node? Uh, a node is a server that's running uh, SiloDB. Think about it. This database is, can be so big that one or two computers may not be enough to run uh, to hold your database. It may be a huge database, and you were talking about four petabytes, correct? 
you have customers with petabytes you're saying yeah yes so this is like <laughs> think about the size of one hard drive it's 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 like terror it's like a thousand ter one terabyte hard drives you need like much more to hold it so we have a, a page in our documentation which is which might be a little bit too technical and deep um but i will put it in the in the chat because this describes really well the architecture of uh db and how the um um how the nodes work together um um but uh, but yeah okay any more questions questions going once question going twice last chance for questions Questions went three times. No more questions. So if there are no more questions, let's again make some noise. Thank you again. Make Thank some. You very much. Thanks make for some, having me. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> We're just stopping the recording. We're not ending. Stay here. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. I'm stopping the recording now.